All right, I think you can go. We've got people starting to roll in. We do. We All sure right. do. Let's take this off, but uh, welcome everyone to the Maru Koala Animal Park for our a live Friday feeding video. And uh, thank you for joining us from wherever, wherever you are around the world. But if you don't know the Maru Koala and Animal Park, we are located in Grantville, Victoria. So that's in southeast Australia, very close to Phillip Island. Some of you may have tuned into the Phillip Island uh, Penguin Parade Walk, but uh, we wanted to do our, our, our own little thing to show off some of our amazing animals, and we've got some of the best for you. One of the most iconic animals here in Australia, obviously, our koalas. So behind me, we do have one of our koalas, Iluka. He started to have a little bit of a feed, but uh, I just want to say thank you for, for joining in. We do uh, miss having all of the people come here and enjoy our animals. Now, Iluka behind me, he is one of our wonderful uh, koalas. And for those of you that uh, are, are from overseas, a lot of people have heard that these are a koala bear, but that is not true at all. We have one of our wonderful marsupials. So. Being a marsupial means that they, the females, they do have a pouch on their, uh, on, on their body to help grow their little joey. Now, I look at here being a male, he does not have a pouch. He helps to make those little babies. But uh, today we are doing a bit of a feed for them. And uh, we do like to feed our koalas nice and early in the morning here at Maru uh, to give them a little bit of a uh, nice breakfast. And then they can eat throughout the day and overnight. So our koalas, they, a lot of people have thought of them as nocturnal, but they really are awake multiple times throughout the day, whenever they really feel like. Because they have been, they've grown up around us here at Maru, uh, our koalas do like to be awake at, uh, at this time in the morning to get their breakfast. Some of this nice eucalyptus leaf you can see throughout their enclosure. And uh, I look here, he is munching away at some of the nice tips on that eucalyptus. They generally are the best tasting part of the leaf the juicy, yummy baby leaves that here at Maru, we like to call the lolly leaf. It's an extra special treat if I find that nice tip on the top of the tree. Now this eucalyptus is very important to our koalas because it is the only part of their diet. They don't eat anything else. A lot of people have thought uh, it would be a bit boring to eat the same thing all day, every day, but there's actually quite a wide variety in these eucalyptus. There's actually almost 850 species located all across Australia, but the koalas, they are very picky. You can see that nice big nose on the front of Iluka's face here. That nose has to determine what kind of leaf is the best for him. Now it can pick up very minute, uh, minute resources in that leaf, including the water content in the, that leaf, the toxin content in, content in the leaf, but even just the general smell of that leaf because each eucalyptus is individual. Now we have a few different species here and in southeastern Australia, there's a few uh, that we like to cut for our koalas as a staple part of their diet. So we do have a, a coastal manor around this area or a Gippsland manor that is one of our staples. And uh, we also have a swamp gum. So they're the two that we always like to provide our koalas as a staple part of that diet. But uh, also there are a few other types of leaf and uh, one that he is munching on is a narrow leaf peppermint. So uh, as the name suggests, it actually smells a little bit like peppermint. So when I'm going out to go and collect some of that leaf from our plantation, I always like to make sure that I test the leaf to make sure it's good for our koalas. So a good way to test the leaf is actually to take one of the leaves, scrunch it up into a ball and have a sniff, the sniff test. It always is something that can determine whether it's a good type of leaf for our koalas. And as the name peppermint suggests, it smells a bit like peppermint. It's one of the nicest smelling eucalypts. And uh, also if we do look at the bark, you can tell what kind of eucalypt it is just from the bark. So we provide quite a few branches for our koalas because as the koala uh, is eating this eucalyptus tree, it needs to eat quite a lot of it because these leaves are quite low in energy but very high in toxins. So that low energy means that they need to eat a lot of it. It means that they need to eat about 10% of their body weight per day. So for Iluka here, he's gonna grow up to be a nice solid 10 to 15 kilos. So if you're a 10 kilogram koala, that's a kilogram worth of leaves you need to eat every day. So we provide quite a few branches, about six to eight branches per koala per day, so that they can uh, get that energy that they need. 
Now, I obviously talk about the toxin in that leaf. So, koalas, they have a very special digestive tract to help, out, help that toxin be digested. A lot of people do think that our koalas are drunk or stoned on that toxin, but it's actually a very special process in the koala's body, meaning that they're the only animal that can eat this leaf without becoming intoxicated. So that means they actually have a very long digestive tract, one of the longest compared to the size of the animal. So that long digestive tract can actually extract as much energy out of that leaf as possible, and it actually can take up to three days to digest one leaf. So breakfast for Iluka a couple of days ago has been digested. And uh, it does mean that uh, they do have to uh, have a very special relationship with a little tiny bacteria in their gut to, that actually eats the toxin of the leaf. Now, we've got uh, Iluka here. He's one of our two, almost three-year-old boys. So he's matured into a nice, handsome young man. And uh, we do have a few more koalas uh, in our care. And we'd like to show off some of the, the other koalas we have here, including one of the, the koalas you may have seen last year, Tilly, and uh, another one of our girls, Grace. So we're actually gonna go and have a look at those two girls in their little area. And uh, we're gonna see some of the feeding that they're gonna do. And they are very, very cute, these girls. So we're gonna find them, where are they? We've got them all, all the way at the back here. So we've got Grace on the right hand side. She's that nice lighter color koala you can see. And then we have Tilly. She's a little bit darker there. Now. Grace is actually about the same age as Iluka over there, but Tilly's just a little bit older. She's almost five years old now. So, looks like you're trying to find something nicer. You wanna find something that's your favorite for today. Now you can see we've got all these nicer uh, eucalyptus branches in here. It's a nice lot of tip on there. So Grace is gonna try and settle herself in, find what she prefers for today. Looks like it's the nice peppermint gum always a nice smelling eucalypt. Now these two girls here, they are females, so which does mean they have pouches. So it does mean our koalas here, they give birth to a little joey. Now that joey can, can, uh, can take about 30 to 35 days to gestate uh, until they are born, and then they have to spend time inside of that pouch. They're gonna spend about six months inside of that pouch, drinking mum's milk, growing and developing from a little tiny pink hairless jelly bean into a little miniature version of mum and dad. So these koalas, they are that marsupial and all baby marsupials, they are called joeys. Now Grace here was a little joey and she's now obviously matured into an adult female. So it takes about two to three years to become a mature adult, then you can actually start to have joeys of your own. So maybe in the next few years, we might see Grace having a, a little joey of her own as well. Now, Tilly is actually a, a very a special koala for here at Maru because uh, most of the koalas in Australia, they are threatened. But uh, they, in certain areas in Australia, they can actually have populations that boom that can create degradation in the eucalypt forests, which means they're actually eating away all of those forests because there's too many koalas in that area. So there's been uh, quite a few programs that have aimed to try and help the koalas in those areas. And Tilly is actually one of the koalas that has come from those, uh, those programs. Now Tilly was actually a little orphan in the Otways and uh, she came to us as a very tiny little joey and we had to uh, make sure we cared for her so she could grow up to be this nice adult koala that we can try and educate people about the plight of our koalas. So Tilly here, she was a very cute little joey. I know she's still very cute now, but uh, she's also got that very fluffy, dark color coloration to her, as you saw with Grace. She's a little bit lighter in color, but Tilly here, she's got that really thick, fluffy coat to deal with the colder temperatures down south here in Australia. So that thick fluffy coat can help to uh, make sure it stays nice and warm when it's really cold, but it's also very good at releasing heat when it does get too hot. Now it looks like Tilly has found a nice comfortable spot on her bottom, just like Grace over here, who looks like she's in a very awkward position, but they have a very 
very special kind of bottom that is like a portable pillow. It's like those memory foam pillows that you might have at home to help make your sleep a little bit more comfortable. Their bottom can actually mold around the shape of the tree and help to make it a bit more comfortable on those really hard surfaces. I see a pile of poo down there. Why have we saved that for everybody? Well, if you uh, have you shown everyone the nice big pile of poo? As I said before, the digestive tract of our koalas is quite long and it, it, it uh, actually takes quite a long time for that, uh, that, those droppings to be processed. But each day, our koalas should produce about 150, maybe up to 200 droppings per day to show that they are a healthy koala. That's why we like to collect all of this, uh, these droppings and we like to actually count them. Every week we make sure we count how many droppings each koala has produced so that we can know that they're getting the right amount of food and that they are healthy. So those, uh, those droppings, they are very important uh, and we've uh, collected them today so we can give them a bit of a count. And now you see Tilly's found some of that really nice peppermint gum. Looks like she's pretty satisfied. Now, we, uh, we obviously started off at Iluka's uh, little area, and now we've moved into our girl area. Because Tilly, you may actually recognize from last, uh, last year, where she actually had a special little Joey. Now you might be able to see right down here that we actually have a nice bulge in her pouch. So we actually do have a little Joey starting to develop in there. Well, it's actually towards the end of its development because uh, our koalas, they breed over the summer period. And after that six months of being in the pouch, the koala, the little koala Joey will actually emerge. Now, Tilly actually uh, uh, was, was bred later in the season. So her Joey is still inside, but it is just about ready to come out. Normally we may see some of our Joeys, like Tilly's Joey last year, that actually came out at around that middle of the year, that June, July. But Tilly's a little bit later this year, so that little Joey's gonna start to emerge very soon. If you do look very closely, there has been a little bit of movement in there, but uh, we are hoping that one day, very soon, we're gonna see that little Joey poke its head out. Now, speaking of Iluka, Iluka is one of our young males that did mature uh, at, because he is about two to three years of age. So he actually is the father of this little Joey. So Tilly is having her second Joey, but Iluka, this will actually be his first little offspring. So we can't wait to see that cute little koala face poke out of the pouch. It no longer looks like a little alien. It now is gonna look a little bit more like mum and dad. And we're hoping it's gonna get some of that nice trait of having that thick fluffy coat and that darker color like Tilly has right here. We are, we are absolutely, absolutely excited and we can't wait because we do have nine koalas around the park and this will hopefully be number 10 poking its head out very soon. Alrighty, well, we have, uh, we have been enjoying this uh, koala feeding for you for you today, and uh, we do hope to bring you another Friday feeding uh, next week. And uh, hopefully, we'll uh, see this little Joey come out, and we'll be able to show that to you very, very soon. We'll make sure that we announce it. And uh, I hope you really enjoyed today. We enjoyed being here, and thank you to uh, all of my helpers here today. Keep a Ruby behind the camera. And, uh, and a few of our volunteers here today. So again, we, uh, we really do hope that you've enjoyed tuning in. We really miss having all of you here to, in person to see all of our amazing animals. And we love to try and educate everyone about our wonderful koalas because they are a vulnerable species that we need to start to think more about, especially after the bushfires we had. We need to start uh, trying to protect these species with new koala reserves and educating about these koalas. Isn't that right, Tilly? We need to make sure we protect you because you're a lovable Australian and we want to keep all those lovable Australians, don't we? Yeah. All righty, thank you very much, guys. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Cheers.